Uh, this government is focused on making sure kids are in school and that we are teaching the basics brilliantly so that each and every child has the opportunity to succeed. And a successful future begins with good foundations at school. And I'm proud to say that in our first 100 days, we've made sure that children are being taught an hour of maths, an hour of reading, an hour of writing for at least uh, you know, at every primary school and intermediate across the country. We've also ensured that children's learning is uh, taking place and teachers can teach by removing cell phones in schools. And it's been great already just to hear the positive feedback from principals, parents, and also kids. And finally, we've also appointed a ministerial advisory group to move with great haste to make sure we get the maths and the English curriculum right for primary school so that we can start next year uh, with actually teaching the basics really well. That is really just the start of our plan on education, to get our education system to be truly world class so that our kids can take the opportunities that exist in a great new world out there. We're going to continue to support choice in our education system, reintroduce partnership schools, invest in structured literacy, and then take action against attendance to get our kids back into school. And it's a priority for this government to lift student achievement, and we will. Of course, an important part of a high quality education is ensuring students and teachers have the right resources and learning spaces, including fit for purpose uh, school buildings. With me today is our Education Minister, Erica Stanford, to talk about the independent review that we're announcing today into the Ministry of Education's school property function. Quite frankly, our, school gov our government has inherited a school property system that I think is bordering on a crisis. This review will address the previous government's failure to sufficiently implement a value for money approach to school property, schools having expectations of building projects that are not able to be delivered on, and significant cost blowouts. Facing significant cost pressures and high demand, the Ministry of Education has been looking at the cost effectiveness of their property projects since September last year, resulting in a number of those projects being paused. And I want to reiterate that this is in no way related to any cost savings initiatives for the upcoming budget. We have not made any cuts to school property since we came to government. Teachers, principals, students and the communities would no doubt have been excited about these projects, only to have them pause and to be facing uncertainty mere weeks before many of them were due to start. We now need to take stock of what has gone wrong in recent years to ensure that we can deliver the classrooms and other buildings that our children need for learning while protecting taxpayers from further cost blowouts. And with that, I'll hand over to Minister Stanford to talk a little bit more about it. Thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, today, I'm announcing an independent review of the Ministry of Education school property function. Shortly after I became the Minister, I learned that Kaipara College had been told that their planned innovation centre had been paused. This news came just a week before the school expected that construction would begin. It was disappointing to learn about the poor communication with the college, given that the decision could and should have been made with the school many, many months earlier. And then in December I was told that the co-location of the three schools in Marlborough had construction estimates that had climbed as high as $405 million for a $170 million budget. It was deeply concerning uh, to, for me to learn that spades were due in the ground in February this year for a project that had no funding secured to deliver the project. The Ministry then made the decision to pause this Marlborough project and a new way forward is now being worked through. This was deeply upsetting for the schools involved, for local iwi and the wider community. But that was just the beginning. In December, I was informed that up to 20 schools could be in a similar position, expecting building work that would likely need to be reconsidered to ensure the property pipeline was realistic and affordable. The Ministry then revealed that they may need to reassess up to 350 projects in various stages from design through to pre-construction to ensure that they're delivering value for money so that as many schools as possible get the facilities that they need. It's not unusual to have isolated examples of projects uh, that experience delivery challenges, but this is of an unprecedented scale. Labour have left a pattern of systemic and embedded challenges that cannot continue. Time and time again we see this across multiple portfolios, cost overruns, inability to deliver uh, on projects, and here we go again in education. It is very clear to me that the current approach to delivering classrooms and school buildings is not working and a change in approach is needed. We are faced with challenges that include not just rising costs, but also overly ambitious and bespoke designs that take way too long to deliver. When you add into this mix uh, poor communication with schools and a slow uptake of standardised, repeatable bu building solutions, what we have is a mess. 
To have plans change so soon after uh, work is due to start, or in some cases early works to prepare sites have already begun, it's deeply unfair for schools and disruptive to teaching and learning. This should be the last thing that schools and students should be worrying about. This does not meet my expectations for adequate communication to schools. Schools deserve clarity on their builds. The review that I am announcing today will ensure we don't find ourselves in this position again. The review will be undertaken by three reviewers who will bring expertise across infrastructure, school property and lead uh, and commercial and government operations. The aim is for the reviewers to report back to me in just three months. I've made it very clear to the Ministry of Education that my expectation for schools is to receive timely, accurate information about their projects so that they can plan ahead to ensure as little disruption for students as possible. And I'll now pass back to the Prime Minister. Thank you, Erica. Uh, just in terms of my movements in the House this week before we open up to any questions, uh, I'm in the House tomorrow on Wednesday and tonight I'm hosting an event for the Black Caps in the Australian Test Cricket side at Premier House. Uh, on Thursday I will be attending a Faso Collins funeral in Auckland. And this week, the government will progress the Auckland Regional Fuel Tax repeal, the repeal of the Section 27 reports, the repeal of the Māori Health Authority and changes to the smoke-free environments and regulated products legislation. Uh, it is the government's intention to lift urgency on Wednesday night so that Thursday's select committees can sit. The House will sit on Thursday, but the Leader of the House, in consultation with the opposition, will ask that the Business Committee allow for a temporary change regarding the limits on proxy votes so that members wishing to pay their respects to the late Efeso Collins can do so without losing their representation in the House. And with that, happy to take your questions. Prime Minister, can I ask you, what is your view of the Waitangi? Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald. Click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here and head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.